again in this video we're going to look at some interactivity in python enabled through the ipython console in jupyter lab so in particular you need to install node.js and ipy widgets and these are all cross platform so you can install them on any operating system that you are in fact whatever we are doing uh, in this particular course should be possible in all operating systems so once you have installed node.js and ipy widgets you can make use of such things so let me open whatever we had done in lecture six because we will need these things okay so first things first let me copy this because we're gonna need all of this so we're gonna import numpy and matplotlib we're gonna update the plot parameters and export format okay so once this is done we can declare suppose let us do a very simple example x b n p dot lin space 0 to 2 times pi and y b sin of x okay so let us do a plot of this very simple okay so we have a plot like this so now let me in fact pass a wave number to this okay so wave number we can pass it like this so 2 pi times k and then i must define what k is so let k be equal to 2 okay so basically what we are doing is trying to plot sine of 2 pi kx this is what we are trying to plot okay so because k is 2 we have two waves in the 2 pi domain if i make it 1 then i have only this so now suppose i want to interact with this plot suppose i want to change the value of k through a slider that would be very useful for us to see how the wave changes as k changes okay so in that case the first thing that we need to do is to convert whatever we have written over here which is the core of the code into a function so let me do that so def plot sign and let it take only an input k so because we're taking an input k we can eliminate this particular line let me comment it at, at this point of time okay so i've commented this line and because we're defining a function we need to indent whatever we want inside the function with respect to this okay so everything's indented whatever is inside this is therefore inside this function so let us make a function call let me run this so it running this simply loads the function it doesn't run anything per se so let me do this so plot sign one so it it passes this parameter one into the function and makes the plot because plotting is a part is executed inside the function the function has no return value which is fine it doesn't have to have a return value function can simply do something okay so now once we have this we can do the following let us import one more thing so from ipy widgets import interactive so interactive is the sub mod uh, is the module inside ipy widgets which will help us to make the interactive plots so now that we have defined this let me define an object w and it will be interactive so now i will pass <coughs> the name of the function which i want to make interactive so it will be plot sign i will just pass the function handle this is what is passing the function handle and i will tell that k is the parameter which should be interactive so after this i will tell that k can take a value from 0 0.1 to 10 and it should do so in steps of 0 0.5 after this is done i must output w so if i just press w and enter it will sort of 
show what w is or i can also do disp w disp is not there so I, let let me just show what w is okay so it makes this and we see a bunch of jagged lines because we have not yet um, increased the resolution of the x axis let me make it 100 that will make things much smoother so now when i slide around this I can see how the plot looks like. Okay, this is how I can study this particular plot in a very easy manner. Now, suppose I want to pass this resolution also. So, let me call this R. I want to pass the resolution of the lint space. Let me create this function. So, now we have a function which takes uh, the wavelength or the wave number and the resolution of the line. Now, I have to now pass, so I can set some default parameters over here. I can set k equal to 1 and r equal to 2, for example. Or not 2, but 20. So, defining the function in this fashion, even if you don't pass any parameters, it will call the function with these default values. So, these are the default values with which the function will be called. Now what I can do is, so I can run this right away, no problem. It will create for me an automatic slider for R in steps of 1, okay. It will create for me an automatic slider and I don't want that lin space should get something which is less than 2. So now, see what happens when I put it to minus 20 obviously there's an error because a lint space cannot be created with minus 20 number of points so I must ensure that r is the slider for r is going to vary from 20 all the way to 200 and in steps of 5 let me run this so by default the values are kept at 1 and 20 the slider values are kept at 1 and 20 now i can change the resolution so it becomes much smoother the plot becomes much smoother as r is reduced the plot becomes more jagged all right so let me increase k so now the plot looks very jagged when i increase the resolution the plot smoothens out so this is the kind of behavior that we expect everything looks fine okay let me in fact open lecture 5 as well we had done a bunch of fixed point iterations and we had made this plot where different initial conditions we were trying to see that depending on what initial guess we have how does the um, curve converge to the fixed point so this is the solution 3.7 something if i remember correctly so now i'm more interested in so over here we had swept over a bunch of initial values but suppose you don't want to do that you don't want to sweep over a bunch of uh, initial values you want to select a new guess point and then see how it goes so let us do this let us take this entire snippet let us take it to this particular file let us try to make that particular plot interactive so first things first we need to remove this loop See, when I run this, it will show a bunch of values because we ran the guess values in a loop. So we don't need to run, we don't need a, a loop counter for anything. We just need this. So this bit of code should be sufficient. Okay. So x0 is like the guess. Perform iterations is the function over here. And that function calls fx, which is over here. So all of this code is self-contained but obviously i have not okay x0 was there from the previous value so let x0 be equal to 2 okay so if x0 starts at 2 it goes over here no problem all right so let us now try to wrap all of this into a single function because we want to interact with this so let me remove n iter and x0. Okay. So we will put all of this inside a function. So def find 
fixed and the inputs will be x naught equal to say 2 and n iter will be equal to say 20. So now all of this is inside a function and the default values if you don't pass these things it will be 2 and 20 all right so with this in mind let us now let us now just call the function and see what happens so find fixed and let's say x naught equal to 3 and n iter equal to 10. So this is what you get. Let me do it for x naught equal to 50, uh, n iter equal to 50. So this is what you get, you get 50 iterations. Okay. So basically this function works and now we want to interact with it. So we will declare an object w and it will be interactive. We will pass the function handle and we will say that x naught can vary from x naught can vary from minus 2 all the way to 5 in steps of 0 0.05 and n iter can vary from 5 all the way to 50 in steps of 1. That's fine. I mean, this one is redundant. If you don't pass the step it will count it as one but for completeness let me pass one lastly we have to display that object so w is actually like a widget which runs inside your browser so then you have to display that widget as well so when i run this this is what we have so when i change the initial value we get a runtime error because the iterations won't converge if you have any guess value okay so you can see how the shape changes when you change the number of iterations what happens okay So sometimes if you choose very odd values it breaks everything so you need to rerun it so so very few number of iterations it has not yet converged okay when you change the initial guess this is how it looks okay it starts at three and takes seven iterations starting from zero of course when you increase the number of iterations this is what you get Okay, so this is a very nice way of quickly discerning what is going on in your problem. If you want to analyze a bunch of parameter space, of course, you can avoid doing all this. You can make functions, you can loop over all the initial conditions, but this gives you a very raw feel of what is going on. It gives you, it, you can play around with the values. Okay, let us uh, go back to our old file and let us see whether we can wrap something else. Something interesting. Okay, so this was the case where the iterations were converging at this point. Let us take this bit of code and let us try to wrap it around another function. So let me run this. Let us see whether it. So we have this plot, no problem. Now let us see how the initial condition converges to that particular solution. Okay, so number of iterations are fixed. X guess. So this is the parameter that we want to vary and see. So for example, I can make it 2. Let me run this. So when you start at 2, this is how it converges. But I want to play around with the initial value. Okay, I want to play around with the initial value. So let us do it. So let us remove this particular line and we will wrap everything inside a function so we will call it define so let's call it cobweb and the input will be x naught and let us say the input default is 0 0.2 so because we're defining a function whatever goes inside the function has to be indented this is very important in python in uh, octave and all you just need to i mean First of all, inter interactive plots are not possible in Octave as far as I know. But 
commercial software such as Mathematica or Maple, they do allow you to do such kinds of interactive things. And that's the whole charm of it. You can do, you can play around with various values. Okay. So we've done this. Uh, this is the code. Okay. Let us quickly see whether the code runs or not, whether we have broken something. So cobweb, let me call cobweb with three as the initial guess. Oh, XG unreferenced. Okay. Let's see what we've broken. Okay, so x naught v, I think it was xg. Let us see. Yeah, it was xg. So we need to remember whatever you pass is sort of the xg that you are using over here. Okay, it is that same variable name that you are using. You cannot define x naught over here and xg over here. So xg is this. So fine. Let me now run this and we do have a plot which shows this convergence. Fine. So now let me pass this to an interactive function. So w equal to interactive, then cobweb xg equal to let us choose a range from say 0 0.5 all the way to 5 and say the step is 0 0.1. Let me run this. Uh, we need to display W as well. Just okay. So see how we can see the convergence of the root. Okay. So for guess values on this side, there is obviously something bad that happens. Okay. It flies off to the other side. So that shows you that you need to guess between those two points. You cannot guess beyond that point. Okay. Excellent. Let me also change the number of iterations. So n iter, let me remove it and call it inside the function itself. Let me have by default five iterations. This will say go from two to 20. Okay, in steps of one. All right. So if I reduce the number of iterations, you see that you're you're tr slowly converging toward the root okay so this is your guess value and you're slowly converging toward the root let me change the guess value let me slide the guess value over here and let me see how this is how the convergence looks like okay so it's quite quite an interesting way of uh, quickly assessing what is going on and in our later studies of dynamical systems and all, for understanding how parameter changes can bring about bifurcations, for example. So it will be very useful for us to study that. We can simply change the value of a parameter with the help of a slider and then understand what is actually going on with the, the various other parameters that we'll see. I mean, in the next class, we're going to start with dynamical systems, but I thought it is very instructive to cover how to make an in interactive uh, widget uh, in Jupyter Lab. And this will be very useful for uh, research scholars who are studying multi parameter systems. When your advisor comes in and he says, Okay, can you change this value and show me? You can simply move a slider and you can show on the fly how everything looks like. Provided, of course, your function runs quite fast. Okay, so with this positive note, I end this particular lecture. I'll see you again next time when we'll start dynamical systems. Bye.